Drums and bass guitar are the foundation of a great mix. If the drums aren't right, the mix lacks energy and loses its impact. With all the signal processing available to us, like EQ, compression, and gating, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Now, the most important thing to keep in mind is to never use signal processing just because it's available, only use it to solve a problem. And with that in mind, let's go through the foundational EQ, compression, and gating techniques for mixing live drums. This video is brought to you by Behringer X32 Mastery, the fastest way for church sound techs to master the X32. And with a team license, you can enroll unlimited team members now and in the future. Finally, everyone will be on the same page. Visit x32.church or click the link in the description to learn more. For great sounding drums, you first need to make sure your drum heads are properly tuned, mics are placed correctly, and the gain is set properly. Then a few simple EQ techniques will take your drums to a whole new level. Now instead of spitting out all these settings on video, I thought it'd be much easier if I just create a cheat sheet that you can download with all of these EQ settings. I'll include a link in the description where you can grab your copy of my drum EQ cheat sheet. Now let's talk compression for drums. It's common for sound techs to put compression on almost every drum mic, but this is not necessary unless you have an inexperienced, uncontrolled drummer. Even in this case, you'll probably only need light compression on the kick drum and possibly the snare. The kick drum is something you want to stay pretty steady throughout the mix, so if you have a drummer that's inconsistent, use the following compression settings. Set your ratio to 2.5, attack to 60 milliseconds, hold 30 milliseconds, and release to 300 milliseconds. Then set your threshold to where the average gain reduction is around 3 to 6 dB. And don't forget, only use compression to solve a problem with volume inconsistencies. Don't use it just because it's available. Now, what about gating on drums? When talking to an audio engineer, especially one that works in a studio, he'll recommend that the drums be fully isolated with proper gating so there's no crosstalk between the microphones. And I'm not gonna say this is wrong altogether, but it's not the right solution for church live sound. When the drums are fully isolated and gated, it's tough to get them to fit with the rest of the mix. Think about it. When isolating, you're putting the drums in another room, so to speak, yet trying to make them sound like they're in the same room as the rest of the band. This takes some serious skill and finessing, which only a full-time audio tech can master. Now, if the acoustical energy coming from the drums is too much, you do have options. I actually have a video that gives you several things to try other than a drum shield. I'll include a link in the description. So when should you use gating? Now, when the floor tom is mixed so that you can feel it in your chest, even the slightest head vibration will be amplified through the sound system as low frequency feedback. This is a great use for gating. Simply set the gate so that the vibrations in between hits are not heard. Here's a sample gate setting for your floor tom. Set your attack to five milliseconds, hold to one millisecond, release to 650 milliseconds, and your range to 60 dB. Then set your threshold so that the light hits can come through, but any low frequency feedback is gated. Now another use for gating would be if too much hi-hats coming through your snare mic. However, a better solution is to communicate with your drummer and ask them to lighten up on that hi-hat. Gating the snare is tricky business, so do so with caution. Currently, I'm gating the top mic of the snare so that it's nice and punchy without ringing afterwards. Now the bottom snare mic, it's left wide open with no gate so that the soft snare, soft snare rolls are heard even when the gate on the top mic remains closed. Now there's more to know when it comes to an amazing drum mix, so I'll include a link in the description to the next video you need to watch, five tips for an amazing drum mix. 